Hello there and welcome to the Chef United way for another match preview. How is everyone doing out there? Apologies, this isn't live, but get us get into the comments anyway. Let us know what you expect from this game, whether you expect one point, three points, zero points. We've not, not been doing too well at the moment, but it is West Brom versus Sheffield United at the Hawthorns. It's going to be Carlos Corbrand's first game in charge for West Brom as well. Um, so, yeah, let's see what happens with that one. First of all, a big shout out to NordVPN, Parrot Peel and our fantastic members. So we'll pop them on screen right now and leave them running for a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring in Hal because it's me and you back together again. I know we're back once again, like a renegade master. It has been ages. I've been Too away long. now for what seven games it's been on the pitch an absolute disaster and uh, the last time we saw each other was at Preston North End and you mentioned Carlos Corbran the first game we ever met each other at was when he was manager of Huddersfield is that right yeah that's the first match we met each other yeah I know going back that's we did the mad. Huddersfield game at the lane and I think we did Luton away the following one and we didn't see a win <laughs> on either of them <laughs> We're not very good that's, at wins, are we? No, that, that's kind of carried on. You're also going to see plenty of me tomorrow. We're going to have a watch along for this one from 12 p.m. Myself and Chad from the Red Half of Sheffield podcast. The first time the two of us have also ever done a watch along together. So it's it's a lot of firsts that I'm mentioning. Yeah, have you met Chad on a video before? Yes, he was on a he was on a video, wasn't he? Once? Not only have I met Chad on a video, I've met Chad in real life when he actually came over to Sheffield for his visit for the. Uh, Earlier in the season. Oh, fantastic. Chad. Don't remember what game that was. <laughs> no, don't know. Chad. Millwall. Mill, Millwall. 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 Uh, Chad, absolute legend. I absolutely love to see all his reactions on the watch along. So make sure you watch that watch along with Hal and Chad. It's going to be flames. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on and let's start this preview by talking about the previous game, which is. Norwich City, or was Norwich City. We went 2-0 down after 15 minutes, and I know we were all thinking the worst. Um, Davis with what well, has to be said, a calamity. Calamity Davis. We're not going to call him that. I think he's been great other than that one moment. Uh, but he totally redeemed himself in the last few minutes. I think it was the 85th minute after two quick-fire goals from the Blades, from Ben Osborne, and then that boy, Ollie McBurney. Uh, it wasn't the cleanest of strikes from Ollie McBurney, but it went in nonetheless. The Blades, from 2-0 down to 2 all. like I said, Pookie's his, uh, penalty was saved by Davis. And then the Blades nearly took the victory, but it was certainly, certainly better than what we all expected after 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a great match reaction for that. If you haven't watched it yet, do check it out. Uh, let's talk about the last time we played. West Bromwich Albion, and uh, last time, of course, we met the Hawthorns was this season in the League Cup. It was a really hot day. Um, I think people will, will remember that day as being one of the hottest, if not, I think maybe the second hottest day of the year. We lost 1-0, nothing else much to say. Uh, in the league, it was even worse under Slavisa Jakanovic last season, uh, Ramsdale Gate, we could call it. We lost 4-0, three of Albion's four goals came from aerial set pieces, Jack Robinson, own goal past then goalkeeper Michael Verips, an error from the Dutch keeper on his first league start, then led to a second half goal for Dara O'Shea before summer signing. Alex Mowat bagged a third six minutes later. It was a disaster. And when another furlong throw led to Callum Robinson, who else, with his third in four games on 59, that was enough to take the baggies top of the league. It was an awful night, one that I do not want to remember. And there have actually been many good games against West Brom over the years, but we just talked about two bad ones. Sorry. Yeah, but I'll try and bring it back by saying, who'd have thought after that game that we were going to finish way mm. above West Brom? So after that, the Blades went from strength to strength. Well, maybe not just after that, maybe a little bit further in the future. And West Brom certainly just dropped down the divisions towards the end of the, uh, of the season. And we beat them at home as well. So, yeah. Me bringing in some positives there. Good. Um, I, like I think right now we should talk about um, players and team news and stuff because we've got a lot of good things to say about uh, about team news. 
we've got a lot of players back, which is fantastic. Obviously, some we've already seen back. Uh, Jackie Longthrow has been on the bench, I think, two or three times. We've seen John Flett get many minutes. Ben Osborne back recently as well. We need a Ben Osborne back because we've got no one for that left-hand side now. Uh, but I say that, we do now have two left centre-backs back. So obviously, like I've just said, Jackie Longthrow, and we've also got Kieran Clark. Andy Stevens also training as well. So all of these players back in training, which I don't think we'd have thought uh, a few weeks back. So yeah, that's all great. What I'm going to do is quickly run through um, the, the players that were missing from training. That's Bogle, that's Jack O'Connell, that's Reese Norrington davis that's Max Lowe, Sander Berger, Kula Barley, and Daniel Jebison. All kind of long-termers, we think. So all the lads that we were hoping to get back or back, which is absolutely fantastic. So I think right now we've probably got as good a team as we can possibly muster for kind of uh, plays that aren't long term. So I'll quickly pop up on screen my predicted team for this game. We've got Basham Egan and Anel at the back. Maybe Anel swaps with Bash. Um, Baldock, Osborne as wingbacks. Uh, Norwood and Doyle, as expected, but that could be Fleck in there. You never know. But, uh, yeah, from all the Blades fans going absolutely crazy at, uh, at Hecke, I'm expecting to see uh, Doyle, McBurney, Illiman and Dai. I think this is the, the, the full team. Unless there's a problem, there's an injury that we don't know about, I think this is the full team, maybe except for James McAtee. That could be Kadra. That also could be Brewster or Sharp. We might go with two up top. So... I think it's quite exciting at the moment. We are playing West Brom when they're not doing too well. Yes, new manager bounce is sometimes a thing, but also the first time you play against a manager, they don't quite know what system they're going to play. He's only mm. been in a job a few days. I think we've got a good chance in this game. Uh, you lead me in beautifully to look at the opposition. West Brom have taken just four points from five games. Richard Beale came in for Steve Bruce. That was like an Ian Beale. Uh, yeah, that don't actually know where, I don't know where Richard Bill's from. Uh, <laughs> Carlos Corbran, now the official head coach in charge. This will be, as you say, his first baggies match. West Brom currently 23rd in the table, just one point above the foot of it. Players to look out for. I could have said former Blades player, Loney, Kyle Bartley, but he is suspended. Got sent off against Millwall last week. Carlin Grant, a threat in their attack. Jed Wallace, Grady Dean and Agana. Uh, lots of players <laughs> to, to look out for. Corberan, now we know this from previewing when his Huddersfield sides played us, favours a 3-5-2, which kind of matches up against Sheffield United like for like. But let's see what he comes up with, because West Brom have been playing a different style under Steve Bruce. I think they'll go with Alex Palmer in goal. Then that danger man, Furlong, who we spoke about and what he did with his set piece, particularly his throw-ins in that 4-0. O'Shea, Peters and Townsend. Then perhaps... Yokosulu, Malumbi, I think Wallace will play, Swift, former Wilder target, Dean and Nagana, and I reckon they might actually go with a solo striker of Grant. He is that dangerous and he can do things on his own. Uh, of course, Callum Robinson, no longer there, if you're wondering why he's been left out. Place for Cardiff these days. Uh, the referee for West Brom versus Sheffield United is Dean Whitestone. I'd rather have Dean Whitehouse. <sighs> Uh, he's from Northamptonshire. I've missed those sides. Have you been holding those in reserve? Have you been doing them while I've been doing these previews without you? Yeah, yeah, every time. And actually, I've Good been looking, thinking, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? And no one's done it. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, well, he's taken charge of 10 games this season, issuing 30 yellows, one red, which was actually two yellows, no straight reds. Uh, he's given four penalties. He was in charge, you might remember, missing a few blatants, but he was in charge of the Blades 0-0 at home against Bournemouth last season, 9th of April 2022. Was that the game where Uremovic missed that chance at the end? Mm, yeah, when he, when he had a, a wooden foot that just went... Like yeah, a club no, foot knocking it over the weird. bar. But they, we had an absolute stonewall penalty decision mm. turned down. Maybe two, if I'm I'm not definitely sure. De one. Definitely one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was weird, the whole Uremovic thing. We'll look back in 10 years and people will be like, who? But I um, certainly thought he was going to be quite can, a player. Can I just say one thing? All the way through that, I said, he's all right. 
but he's not as good as everyone made out. Everyone were like, this guy is the next coming of Jesus. And he was just he was just all right. It was just all right, guys. How was he with crosses? With cross with crosses. Right, right. We move. Uh prior to that, <laughs> Dean White, what was his name? Dean Whitestone. White go. House, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dane Whitehouse was uh, in charge of our 2-0 away win at Peterborough, because of course he would be. Uh, there we go. Right, we've we've covered the ref. And uh, we're going to look at score predictiones. Uh, what are you saying, sir? I mean, I know what you're saying, because I've watched your, your predictions video. Check those out if you haven't already. Yeah, and there it is on screen right now. If you haven't seen this already, this thumbnail, click on it. It'll be right there waiting for you after this video. So click on that. Have a look what me and Ollie said. And the reason why I am uh, talking and talking and talking is because right now, not 100% sure what I said. I definitely said a Sheffield United win. I think I went for a 1 0 Blades win. You did. 2 1. It could be 7 6, could be anything. But I went for a Blades win and I'm going 1 0. Yeah, and I'm going 1 0 West Brom. I think new manager bounce. I think <laughs> oh. Corberan, you know, give me a game where we beat a Carlos Corberan side. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> even with Dane Whitehouse as referee, it's going to be too much. Uh, so I, I just, I'm, you know, and also since I've left the country, Sheffield United haven't won. I'm adding it all together. For me, it's not looking good. And I think it's still too many injuries. And hearing about Koulibaly and his knee being really big since the operation, he's not coming back anytime soon. And he was a player that I think would have got minutes. It's going to be very, very difficult. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, let's do some player connections. Mm, let's do that. I'm not going to do too many because I've already mentioned Kyle Bartley, who we've already said is suspended for oh, this. Can, I've mentioned. Can we just stop here, right? Right. Because you're Southern, and I absolutely you are. I Why? absolutely can't stand when people say Carl Bartley. It's Kyle. It's Kyle Bartley. Kyle. Say it. Say it with me. Kyle. Kyle Bartley. <laughs> you did well there. You did well. I am I not you were Southern. Say Carl. We've been over this so many times. I'm actually much more northern than you. I was born north of the wall in Scotland and brought up in North Yorkshire. Kyle Bartley, who is suspended for this one. Thank you for that. I'm going to be really careful how I say my Kyles from now. I don't even notice. Uh, Callum Robinson, I've also already mentioned him. Uh, one player I really liked who played for both of these was Rob Hulse. Mm hmm. And you know I what people always many say? That don't like Robles. Robles was fantastic in the Premier League. I'll say it now before anyone mentions it in the comments. If he hadn't got his leg injury at Chelsea, Sheffield United would have won the Champions League that season. Uh, also, Ian Hamilton, one of the worst players I've ever seen wear a red and white shirt, and that is saying something because we've had a fair few contenders, but he was absolutely dross. And that's all I can think of. So put yours yeah, but, in the comments. Do you know when you said Ian Hamilton? I always, I can never like remember which one was Ian and which one was Des. And if you look at them both, they look very much <laughs> not alike at all. So but Ian also, Hamilton was the floppy haired man, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Des Hamilton was really good when he was on loan to us from Newcastle. He'd been a really good star player at Bradford. And I really liked Des Hamilton. Ian Hamilton, we're talking about the. More recently in Hamilton, because Ian Chico Hamilton played for the Blades before my time, but was apparently a very good player. So let's not get it twisted. Uh, let's not get it twisted. Did did this Chico guy, did he play for West Brom as well? No idea. That would have been fantastic. That, that would have been fantastic. Anyway, let's Tell us in the comments. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Join me for the watch along with Chad. Absolutely. And before everybody goes, can we get 100 likes on this video? Please, please, please. 100 likes at least. We need that. I don't know why. We just do. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you for Hal and Chad's watch along tomorrow, 12 p.m. See you then.